Welcome back to another resume review. In this episode, Ken and I are going to go through some creative and really diverse resumes. If you haven't checked out his channel already, you are missing out on some quality content. So definitely go do that. Uh, you should also check out episode one, which we did on his channel. You should stay until the very end of this video because we think that the tips and recommendations that we have for these resumes can really help you elevate yours as well. Also, we hope that we're mildly entertaining, at least. All right, let's get to it. Let's sing a song full of hope, full of pain. All right, so our first resume is Matthew Naples. Or I think it's Naples. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But yeah, first off, very, very pretty color scheme, like really eye-catching, so I really appreciate that. Um, first thing you guys all know I check is a one page. It is one page. Good job, Matthew. <laughs> you did good there. Always keep it to one page. Um, let's see. Programming languages, frameworks, libraries. Looks good. Technical skills. So technical skills here, I would... Um, Put, like subsections about what kind of skills they are. Are they like programming skills like Python or R? Are they data science specific ones um, such as like regression and general linear models, classifications, things like that? Because if you have those out, it looks a bit more professional. It's easier for the person looking at it to see exactly what kind of skills that you have. Um, and yeah, with software, I would just put that in with technical skills. Um, and another comment is if you're going for a data science position over here, there's no need to put in like Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, like a lot of these things are really nice and useful, but I like to think of it as more like you want your resume to tell a very, very specific story very, very clearly. So it depends on if you, maybe you worked at stuff that's very like related to um, these like Adobe Premiere Pro or like video editing software, then sure put it in there. But if not, general rule of thumb is try to make it into a coherent story. In terms of experience, looks good. I would label that work experience or professional experience. So your remote data science intern at Nexus brand, that's really great. So you do have experience in data science already. Um, I also really like the highlighting that you're doing here. So, you know, to find over 10,000 stores in the target market, I love the quantification as well. Um, constructed intricate SQL queries. So one thing is like, I would usually leave out words like intricate or like very descriptive languages that make that would make something seem more complex or more, more just like, you know, fancy. Because honestly, the person who's reading your resume, they're probably a data scientist or a recruiter that's seen a lot of these. So when they see words like that, it actually comes off as more amateurish than if you just wrote a constructed SQL queries um, and presentations to validate a successful product. Yeah, um, in terms of projects, so this is good. Okay, I take that back. You're a videographer. That's fair. Put in the Adobe stuff. Put in the video editing stuff. Um, that's, that's relevant there. Yeah, in terms of projects, really like that as well. I really like how you mentioned the technologies that you use, um, and also you quantified it really well, so really, really good there. Okay, create a YouTube video with 10,000 views and a new channel with zero subscribers. You should teach me how to do that. <laughs> that is very, very impressive. <laughs> And you're founder and owner of your own personal training. That's also really interesting. So I love your resume. I really love it so far because it's just like telling me these stories very clearly. Yeah, they all kind of fits together to who you are as a person, right? Like you're not one dimensional. But for each thing that you do mention, you also talk about it enough for me to get a good understanding of that. So I really, really like that. Um, Strength and conditioning in turn. Yeah, so this looks really good to me. Um, for your about me, um, you know, usually I, I still think that you shouldn't really put um, an about me and just like, I, I really wouldn't put a profile like that. Um, but in your case, I almost want to make an exception because you have so many aspects of different things going on. And maybe your about me um, can really pull that together. So in your case, I feel like it, I, I can make an exception to that. And I think it's probably better to actually leave that in there. And I really like the best books to read this year. So this is something that I haven't really seen before and I would never like go like, hey, you should put best books to read this year. But I kind of like it. So what do you think, Ken? <laughs> so I have a feeling he has seen my resume because that's something I also have on there. Oh. Um, uh, and honestly, this resume, it looks very good to me because again, this does <laughs> resemble what, what my personal resume looks like. <laughs> but he took my advice and does not have a picture. He, he's done a lot of the things really well that 
in my video where I talk about my own resume, I would say that, uh, you know, I said they like, don't do these things. And he has 100% uh, made those corrections. So I agree with you on, on all of the feedback. Um, I think that if I were him, the, the only real uh, other thing that I would consider is having this version, which is highly stylized, and perhaps one that is a little bit less stylized. So maybe one where this, uh, where the box on the on the right side is not black, it's maybe a more muted tone. I do like the black contrast, but uh, really dark colors are not necessarily very traditional on resumes in general. Um, so, you know, it, it really depends on the positions you're applying for, but uh, I think that this is this is a, a, a very strong resume from my perspective. Um, again, a little bit of that is probably influenced by how I've set my own resume up. So <laughs> you're you're welcome to to compare if you'd like. And and I think that for a resume use case, it's perfectly fine to replicate a resume that you like. That is not something that that is you know as, as long as you're not replicating the work that someone else has done. Uh, I, I think that that's a perfect case where you you can almost directly copy something that you like. Um, and you know it's kind of hard to cite on a reference, right? <laughs> but uh, but no, this this has done really well. Uh, I, I also like the interests. I mean, he talks about his powerlifting. He's clearly very interested in in sports and kind of the hybrid between health and this data science field. And that is conveyed very effectively here, in my opinion. Well, I haven't seen your resume. So the fact that I looked at this and I was like, no, this is really good and it really stands out to me means that, you know, it's good. <laughs> so I, it's not like just confirmation bias on my part. So that's that's a good sign. <laughs> Should I pop it up real quick? Yeah, yeah, why not? All right. uh, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. This is an intermediary Ken resume review. Oh, so, I definitely see the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, so in my resume, I would definitely not recommend having a picture like that. Um, but, you know, as you can see, the, there's a reasonable amount of, of similarities in structure. And again, I, I absolutely welcome that. Um, I, I, I think that having something unique about yourself, as long as it ties in to the rest of the story, it makes sense. Just as Tina said, I think I probably go a bit more into the about me than most other people uh, because I'm not using this resume to land a job. This is more for people to say, hey, who is Ken? What experiences has he had? Would I like to work with this person as a, a, a contracting client? Um, but uh, again, I, I think that the biggest thing we'd like to think about is, does this resume tell a story? Does it make sense how they got from point A to point B? And I think Matthew did a very good job of that in general. Agreed, agreed. Maybe I'll pop up my resume at some point too. I've actually never done a resume of my own resume review before. So yes, maybe maybe that, stay tuned. It, it might show up at some point. <laughs> we could do a, like a cross pollination one where you just roast mine and I roast yours. And yes. uh, I was I was pretty rough on myself, I think, in the last one. So uh, where I, where I went over my own resume. <laughs> so. Uh, I, I think that that's always good. I, I did find some spelling errors, which is bad for business um, in my own. So again, good stuff, Matthew. We, we spent a little more time on yours, but I think it was worthwhile because it is a very, uh, it's a good case study and it's something a lot of people can, can take some pretty good stuff from. The first thing that I noticed about this, as we have discussed before, is that it is more than one page. And that is something that we want to avoid if we can. Um, the, again, the best way to trim this down would probably be to, to remove a professional summary and just start with the technical skills. We've also discussed this a little bit before, but we want to lead with our professional experience over our projects, especially if our professional experience is already, you know, a data analyst, even though it's, it's on the freelance side, I think that that's, uh, that's perfectly, perfectly fine and perfectly relevant to the data science career field. We actually have a lot of really good um, experience here. And again, you want to you want to lead with that. I think projects behind that, that makes sense. Um, you probably should have education closer to the top as well, considering you are a, a recent graduate. But from what it looks like, this is clearly organized. 
um, you know, this is something interesting to me where you have verbal communication, uh, taught a class of 40 students twice weekly. You don't necessarily have to call that out, but in this case where you're very clearly uh, demonstrating the skill, I don't necessarily, I, I could go either way on that one. I think it might be okay to leave it in in this, in this use case because you have the clear example of where you're demonstrating that skill. So I, I'd actually like to get Tina's thoughts on that in a second as well. Uh, but very, very well organized. You have some good links here. Um, overall, if this were one page, I think it'd be a, a very, and, and reorganized a little bit, I think it'd be a very strong resume. Agreed, agreed. So first off, University of Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, a lot of Canadians, huh? Yeah, I'm surprised. You, you, you get a lot of Canadians. And that's where I graduated from as well, if, if people didn't know that from my undergraduate. Um, you, got, you did political science and economics, so I knew a lot of people from there as well. So yeah, I love the um, listing out your education and, and everything um, about that. So I agree with Ken, move it to the top. And also you can probably condense everything a little bit. Like you can, instead of saying 2020 winter Dean's List Scholar, you can just put that 2020, 2019, you know, just put it all together. Um, and then make, just, just like kind of condense that a little bit. That'll help in terms of your real estate of, to get your resume to one page as well. Um, in your coursework. So yeah, that's, that's good as well. I would just like, just kind of condense everything in general. I think the certificate here, um, I guess, okay, I, I, can, I take that back. You, you can leave that in there because I can see that your degree was in um, political science and econ, so you need to convey somehow that you do have data science experience. So I think that is good. Um, another thing is like, I really love how much research that you've done. And because I know UFT, UFT is a very, very strong research school. So I'm so happy that you took advantage of that and just did um, all that research with different professors. So yeah, like that really shows to people that you're really involved and you know, the stuff that you're doing is actually driving impact as a data scientist. Um, my only comment for that, also just to condense a little bit, you don't need to, right? Like, you know, programming statistical skills, programming skills, statistical skills, programming skills. You can just make that, I would always say like three bullet points. Um, first one, have a description of what you did. Second one, what are technologies that you use? Third one, what's the impact that you, that you were able to drive with whatever it is that you're doing? And that usually covers pretty much everything, whether it's professional experiences, also if it's projects. Um, so yeah, except for that, do you mind just scrolling up to the top a little bit? Uh, taking a look. Yeah, like everything else. Let's see, technical tools, skill set. That looks good to me. Um, for technical tools, I might just throw in some libraries there for Python. Um, visualization, maybe use like Seaborn, uh, Matplotlib, maybe some Pandas if you, I, I'm assuming you'd use that. For skill set, so when people write machine learning, um, I, okay, correct me if this is not how you feel though, Ken. When, when I see the words machine learning, that kind of just screams amateurish to me because if someone goes like, oh, I do machine learning, you know, like, I just feel like, well, if you really did machine learning, you would be able to list out what kind of machine learning that you did. Or like maybe you did NLP work, right? Um, so I would prefer to see if you kind of listed those out instead of, or even like you had parentheses and wrote them down instead of just writing like machine learning. Um, yeah. I I agree. I, I would say that, you know, if you were to say machine learning and then parentheses, even at the very least saying regression, classification, clustering, maybe you did some computer vision, uh, like the subcategories of it, you probably want to even go a step further. But at the very least, I would have that. I think that would, that shows someone that you understand one of the most basic things about data science is like, there's two easy questions that almost everyone gets asked. What's supervised versus unsupervised learning? And then also like what are the types of problems you you face in data science and that shows in that one like you know 30 40 character segment that you understand that <laughs> yeah yeah for sure but yeah except for that i think this is really really solid resume awesome i have one last thought uh that uh that we were talking about so you were talking about how the bullets so the overview the uh tools used and then the impact. I think that makes a ton of sense. I usually try to put uh, some form of impact in the in the goal as well, um, or, or like the overview of the project. I, I just think that, you know, we, in business, you're taught this idea of bottom line up front. And so we want in one line, if we can to say, this is what we did, 
uh, this is like why we did it and this is the impact that it had. So you can even potentially save yourself another bullet there. Um, you know, that's, that's really it. Again, I think this was strong and I think that we're in pretty good consensus about how Andrew can improve. Yeah. Okay. You, you guys are already going to know. First thing I check. Oh no, it's two pages. Condense it. One page, one page. <laughs> Especially Canada for Bachelor of Math. You uh, are just starting out. No need for two pages. So skills looks good. Tools, languages, education, um, experience. Really like that. Data science intern, you know, straight up. You have data science experience. Really love seeing that. Uh, data platform developer, interesting, and logistics analyst. So I'm very impressed by how much professional experience that you have already. So that's really great. Um, in terms of the bullet points, I was just trying to condense that a little bit more. Um, and just, you know, we talked about this previously, so I'm not going to like you keep harping on it. Just, you know, list out the things that are, are most important and you can definitely save some real estate there. Um, projects looks good. Yeah, I think this is fine. Like a lot of people go like, oh, I need like five projects on my resume. You really don't. If you just have one or two, like that's that's perfectly fine. So this is really great that you put, you know, you didn't like just overemphasize all these personal projects that you did. Um, one thing though for this project, I noticed that you right here, you wrote pre-process numerical text data analysis through text normalization, TF-IDF. So this looks like a very, very common NLP framework. So I actually don't think it's necessary for you to list out every single step, unless there's something that you did that's very different from how NLP usually works. Um, yeah, because by, by doing that, um, it just comes off as a little bit like, you know, you, you don't, you're not as familiar with what you're doing, since you, if you were, you would know that this is kind of what everybody always does. So yeah, just a little bit nitpicky, but something to consider. Um, coursework, I've never seen data types and structures before. I usually see data structures and algorithms, but if this is just like a new way of putting it, nothing wrong with that. Um, and leadership activities, really love that. You know, you're part of these clubs, which means that you clearly are able, able to communicate with people and you're not just, you know, like sitting by yourself coding all day. So that is always a plus in a data scientist. All right, what do you think, Ken? I agree. So in... Let, let's start at the end where, where you were already uh, down with the coursework. So I personally think that even if you've done certificates, it's okay to put that under the education bucket at the top. Same with the leadership and activities. To me, I, I personally like to compartmentalize everything like that. And uh, it, it could save some space and also some unnecessary um, sections on your resume there. So. That would be my thought is to just put some of that stuff under education. It looks, it makes it look like you're a lot more involved at your school to begin with, uh, considering the education section currently is, is a little bit sparse. For the skills, I would perhaps put the languages above tools, just because almost every recruiter, the first thing they look for is, can this person program in Python or R? Uh, so that would be the first thing they're looking at to begin with. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting, you said, you know, you really don't need that many projects. I agree, but I also disagree. So the way I think about it is the more real work experience you have as a data scientist, a data analyst, whatever that might be, the less projects you really need to showcase. So if this person, especially in college, college students, the less experience they have, the more they really need to show that they can do data science through the project background. So, you know, since this person has a data science internship, they were a data platform developer, they were a logistics analyst, they have a lot of real world experience. Their projects are not going to be looked at as carefully because they already have, have proven the, the work that they can do. If this person perhaps didn't have that data science internship, I think that they should fill that void with doing more projects. So, you know, nothing is ever really black and white, but I think that that is you know, if you're thinking about, okay, how do I give myself the best opportunities? You have to think about, okay, where are the weaknesses in my, in my resume or myself as a candidate? And how do I fill those with uh, additional or external work? And we will go on to Chaitanya. This is another resume that I believe to be very um, visually appealing. It is a single page. I really like, this is super small, but I really like the dotted lines to separate the sections. I just, I just think that that's, that looks really nice. This is the second one uh, that we've seen in this series where we see the, the keywords or the tag style. Uh, 
And I, again, I enjoy that. I, I think as long as it passes the screening systems that these companies use, then it is perfectly okay. We should probably link or experiment with using one of those systems, one of those resume checkers in a future video, just to show people what that looks like. I think that would be very effective. Uh, there's very good experience here. Um, you know, masters in, I mean, education, sorry, masters in computer science, bachelor's in engineering, a lot of really strong projects. Uh, but as we can see, there isn't any real work experience. I would change this section, like we talked about before, to project experience. And if I was Chaitanya, I would do everything in my power before I graduated from school to try and find research opportunities or internships. That is going to be the biggest single thing that will help them land a position after they graduate. So, uh, you know, I, I think that the only thing this is missing is the work experience, or and I'm sure there are some other things that Tina will point out, um, but uh, that, that can really be expanded upon. Also the coursework, I would just throw that under, under the education up here, uh, because that's where people are gonna be looking for it in general. All right. Well, you guys can see that what really Kevin enjoys is dotted lines. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the aesthetic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, kidding aside, though, I feel like this is really a very aesthetically pleasing resume. Um, being passed through ATS, and like this is really great. It's just enough stylization for me to be like, oh, like yeah, this is catching my eye, but not enough. If I were like super like a very like traditional person I wouldn't be like oh no you know there's so many colors here so that's that's really good um yeah like I you know this is exactly what you were saying about like projects if you don't have that much experience to emphasize that so I definitely this is like an example of that so I definitely agree with you on that one um emphasize your projects especially if you don't have any experience I actually uh what you were saying about research experience completely agree you're in school right now I like you know pretty much harp on this continuously. The best data science experience if you're in school is a research position. Um, made an entire video about that. So yeah, completely agree. Um, I would say like for the projects that you have here, uh, let me see. I would try to just emphasize impact a little bit more, especially since you don't have any um, professional experience with your projects. If you can get them to seem more impactful, like they actually did something where they you know, allow someone to understand something that would really drive home the point a little bit more. Uh, that might be difficult, I understand, but that's something to keep in mind if you can. Um, let's see. So in terms of skills and tools is good. Fields of interest, I don't know if that's necessary because your field of interest is going to be whatever you're applying to, um, which I assume is going to be data science. Um, coursework, yeah, we would just throw that with education and also with additional skills. I don't really think that's necessary as well. I can also talk about this for previous resumes. You're supposed to be really like showing these skills through the things that you've done, um, either like you're part of clubs where you've done like experiences with, as part of your projects. Um, so yeah, like just listing out that you're good at problem solving, results oriented, enthusiastic, and you're good at debugging. It doesn't really mean that much to me um, because you're just telling me that and I don't really see it. But yeah, that's all I have. Awesome. You know, one thing that you'd mentioned of making, uh, talking about value add, something I've had a couple of conversations about recently are doing just front ends for some of these projects. So having a little app, a little toy scenario that people can click on and click through, that shows them that you have the user in mind for any of this data. So you know, that, that's something that might require a little more technical work, but that really goes a very, very long way. Uh, one last thing related to this is that, uh, you know, you can show additional skills through extracurriculars. So if you've done volunteer work, if there's a, you know, if someone had causes they cared about on their resumes, like, let's say, you know, I, I'm very sensitive to autism awareness and I put that, Hey, that's one of the things I'm passionate about. Like what person and what reviewer in their right mind is going to be like, you know, this person cares about charities or they care about something. I don't like that person, right? No one's going to say that. Um, and I'm not saying that you should like game that in any way, but if there are things that you care about, there are things you're passionate about. There are things that, you know, you spend your time in certain ways. Um, you should share that, especially if it, if it could be interesting to a recruiter, it could be interesting to give someone a little bit more context around yourself. 
Awesome. Back to you. This is a cool resume. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the worst. No, that, that, that was like me, like you know, like it wasn't a disgust. It was of like appreciation, truly. Uh, I, I know oh, that okay. came off as that. was like, oh my god. Anyway, no, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. <laughs> All right. Um, you know what? This is very similar to my resume. So that's that's like a. Um, interesting. So in this collection, we have something that's similar to Ken's, and there's one that's similar to mine now. This is kind of pretty much high structure mine. Um, but yeah, let's see. Education, Northeastern, Bachelor of Science, Drexel Bachelor of Science. Okay, cool. So it looks like you transferred. Cool. Drexel to Northeastern. I almost played golf at Drexel. Really? Almost. Yeah. It's in, I think, Pennsylvania. I was at UPenn, so I was right next to Drexel. Walked by their campus every day. The Drexel Dragons, I think. Yes, yes, Dragon. Skills and relevant coursework. So that looks good, Python. I really like how you actually emphasize what libraries that you're using. So, you know, you're not just like putting Python up there. Um, R, that's great. SQL Tableau looks really good to me. Relevant coursework. I would just stick relevant coursework um, up where education is at because that's probably where you did your relevant coursework. Um, even if it's certificate, that's fine as well. Work experience brought us to MIT and Harvard. Very, very impressive. I used to do research and you know that is not easy to get. So very impressed by that. Um, extracted, interpreted, presented data. So development of therapeutics. So like, um, here, here's the thing. What, what I, I know what Broad Institute is, but if people are people who don't know what Broad Institute is, can do you know what Broad Institute is? Nope. So, yeah, so if you don't know what that is, right, it's really, really important to actually emphasize um, in your first, either like as part of your, your goal or part of your first bullet point of what is it that you're doing, right? Like, so why, why is, um, what is it that you're even trying to accomplish? And then go into the nitty gritty, talk about your, your like exactly what you did, your extracted, interpreted, presented data, um, and use like graph, graph pad, prism, and Excel and all these different tools. So that, that really helps us to, this person looking at your resume to immediately know what's happening. Um, yeah, Merck and Co, pretty impressive. Yo, this is like, is this my resume? <laughs> this looks like my resume before I went to grad school. It's very, very like, there's pharmacology. I did pharmacology as well. So <laughs> um, yeah, like this looks good. I like how you said immuno-oncology drug pipeline. So the only thing that maybe Ken, you can, you can speak to a little bit later is if you read this, is it too jargoning for you? Because to me, it's like very obvious because that's my background. But what if it's to someone that isn't in that background? Um, Medical school, that looks good. So lots of research, amazing over there. Affiliation and leadership, that's really cool as well. It shows that you're, able, you're actually involved in the, in the school and you can communicate with people and you can work with other people. So that's really awesome. And also you have um, leadership experience, which is always, always really good to see. And honors and awards, and as well as hobbies and interests. I like it. I mean, that's, I don't really have that much to say. I think this is a really solid resume. What do you think? I agree. I think that this is very strong. Um, you know, there's a couple just small things that people should think about when they're, they're um, you know, writing the skills or something like that. So when we're talking about pandas, numpy, things like Git, um, a, a lot of the times I don't think they're supposed to be capitalized. Um, even if we're talking, you know, because the way that we write them programmatically, they're case sensitive. Um, that, that's, again, very small. But if you're thinking about, oh, that from a programmer perspective, I think most programmers, even when they write about these things, they keep them in lowercase. I could be wrong about that, but um, very little touches like that might be interesting to a recruiter, especially if they're really heavy on the technical end. Um, you harped on the work experience, especially the Broad Institute. Um, I, from the, the description here, I don't know, like, the, the value of the work that they did. You know, what was the greater goal? Was it to, um, you know, I, I just don't have enough context around what, what that project was around. You know, yes, they're doing some, some basic data manipulation, data analysis, but for what purpose? You know, is it to help improve some sort of health outcomes? Was it, uh, you know, what was the research they were working on? 
uh, for that uh, professor, for that PhD. That, that's something that would mean a lot to me and I'd like to understand it myself. Uh, I, I really like the affiliations and leadership. Uh, I think that those are, are nice touches. Those are very important. I mean, you talk about saying, oh, I have leadership skills. Uh, if you're the director or a board member of something, that immediately puts you into that category, right? And then the hobbies and interests, I personally really enjoy seeing these things on the resume. And um, a cool has some pretty awesome ones. A student pilot, competitive dance, meditation instructor. Those yeah. are all things that in and of themselves can start a conversation. You know, um, part, part of thinking past the just getting the interview process and getting to the interview is I would say at least a third of the interview is just being able to converse with the other person, uh, making sure that they're interesting and that you'd want to work with them. And having good story points like that is very important. One thing I will say at the, in the Harvard Medical School um, one, I, I don't know if, if there's supposed to be an E at the end of ensemble, so that might be a slight typo. It could just be something that, it, you know, I'm, that's not how, uh, that's correct. And I'm wrong about that, but we just do want to be fairly careful, careful, especially with uh, technical stuff of spelling them correctly. Mm -hmm. I would have known this if you asked me this maybe two years ago. Now I don't know. <laughs> But yeah. but yeah, so in terms of the jargoniness, yes, this is very jargony. Um, I don't know what half of it is. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, the resume and the structure is, is good enough that I really wouldn't care too much what it was. Uh, my biggest thing is just the, the broad institute. Uh, understanding what that research was for would be a lot more valuable to me. Yeah, yeah. And if you're applying for something that's biology related, which it seems like your entire resume is about, so there's actually no problem with you being jargony because the person who's reading your resume will know what those terms mean. Yeah, I agree 100%. All right. I think that's our last one, isn't it? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, hopefully this is useful. You know, this kind of uh, drink from the fire hose approach is going to be useful to some people who are watching this trying to improve their resumes. I think we saw some really strong resumes uh, in this session. And we also saw some very uh, consistent patterns of how people could improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And we also got a glimpse of Ken's resume. So there's an added bonus. <laughs> and remember, don't copy my resume uh, because there's a lot of things wrong with it. Only take away the good things from it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was really good. I didn't even see your resume. So. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, until next time, Tina. Yeah.